Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes these books talk about. Every week I speak to various authors who are behind life-transforming books as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog on the station this and every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and on Sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Hello and welcome to The Writer's Blog talk show. Now, this is a program designed to celebrate authors. Um, Ghanaian authors, African authors, any good book we can find. And if the author is available, of course, we're bringing it right to you. We are also seeking to promote other stakeholders within the publishing industry. We are proudly powered by Reveal Multimedia, uh, supported by Concilio, Caris Books, Anyadu, Akko Books Audio, Challenge Enterprises of Ghana, Cody's Beauty and Fashion GH, FC Beauty, My Beautiful Makeup is by Kain Ketsi, FC Beauty, and of course, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, that's where we're coming to you live from today. They say uniquely golden, traditionally Ghanaian. Of course, very clothing and vihak fashion. Our media partner, Sunny FM, and Sunny TV. Now today we are so blessed to have a very great man um, who has written over 50 books. In fact, he is on his 59th book. He is Raphael Enchi, uh, popularly known as author Ralph. And we'll be discussing from one of his many books. This one is titled Bething Prophetic Promises. So you've received a prophecy. How do you ensure that this prophetic word spoken over your life comes to pass. When we are back from this break, we'll get talking to him. Stay with us. Cody's Fashion and Makeover is a one-stop shop for all your beauty needs. Our services include makeup, nail art, pedicure, manicure, braids, wake up, hair styling, and so much more. Our fashion outlets chance out a trendy unisex African print designs for every occasion. So go on and wear Africa, wear Ghana. Locate us at Second Link Chapel Square, Sakomono. Contact us on 0545-988-607 or 0302-985-409 or 0504-227-113. At Cody's Fashion and Makeover, styling you is our hope. Akko Books Audio makes African books accessible and available for everyone, anytime, anywhere, on a wide variety of mobile devices, including computers, tablets, and of course, mobile phones. My name's Emma Dadson, and I'm founder of Akko Books Audio, a digital streaming platform, an African spoken word experience provider. We transform African books into exciting and engaging audio experiences that make reading affordable, convenient, and fun. We offer readers a library of top-notch African authors and literary voice talent through listening to audiobooks and audio programming. With over 300 titles in over 20 categories, including fiction, biographies, and children's books, we aim to be the world's largest African audio digital library promoting audio literacy in English, French, and African languages. Asante from Anyedu. 
Anyadu is a children's company, a multimedia children's company that wants to help parents to raise successful and blessed kids. We believe that all children have potential and it has to be unleashed. So we are helping parents to unleash this potential and especially for us as Africans, we believe that this is our time, this is when we can make an impact in this world. We want to raise a new generation of strong, confident, bold um, African children who would change the world, change the narrative of an African in the world. We are starting from Ghana, we are hoping that we will be able to reach the whole of Africa and let the children know that, look, they can do anything that they want to do because through Christ all things are possible. Welcome back. Like I shared with you earlier, we are here with author Raf, author of over 50 books. And we are going to get talking to him, discussing from this all-important book, especially in our time, Bething Prophetic Promises. Now, Raphael Enchi, widely known as author Raf, is a renowned writer of over 50 books, like I mentioned. Some of his titles include On Your Max, Get Set, No More Delays, Ten Deadly Men Every Woman Must Avoid. Mm. Ten deadly women every man must avoid. Twelve senses every woman must know. I think this one is a weapon. It's, it's a weapon that every single woman must find. Restore and increase and so many others. His books have inspired several hundreds of thousands across many nations. Author Ralph continues to travel to various countries including South Africa, Zimbabwe, France, Switzerland. In fact, the list is endless. To inspire many people to pursue purpose in life and ministry in eternity. He's the founding president of Rain Foundations, a Christian organization with a mission to raise relevant achievers to impact nations. Ralph is also the CEO of the Dreamers Hub. He's a director of Happy Health Haven, a therapeutic establishment that focuses on the health and happiness of people. Currently, he's pursuing a Bachelor of Law um, uh, degree uh, he, at the University of London. Um, he's married to Christelle Entry, and they are blessed with a wonderful family. For our quote for today, I'm picking it from chapter two of his book. And this one says, thoughts and imaginations are initiators of the future. What you continuously feed your mind on begets perspective, which ultimately begets manifestation. It's good to have you. It's good to be here. It's amazing. My first question will be, how did you discover that you could write in 59 books? <laughs> <laughs> well, the discovery um, of my writing ability, I, I, I would say that it started in class three, far okay. back um, in Achimota school, Okay. when I used to write letters for my friends. Um, that is when they wanted to write to their parents. Okay. So I'd write letters for them, and then when whatever they requested for is brought to them, they give me my share. Oh, I, I see. <laughs> yeah, and I think that the love for writing um, was discovered at that early age. Okay. And I didn't stop at that. I noticed that I was pretty much very good in English language throughout school. Okay. Yes, and I also loved to read a lot. Okay. Uh, so I'd say that that is how come I discovered my 
writing. You're writing. Poets, yeah. So, um, and how long have you done this to have written over 50 books? Um, I, so I wrote my first book in level 300, University of Ghana, 2005. Wow. Yeah, and in that year I did six books. Six books. Yeah. So it, was it like every two months you were releasing a, a book? Not necessarily, because I have a book like um, Ten Deadly Men, Every Woman Must Avoid. Okay. It took me about four days to write it. Um, normally, when I have a book, I do a lot of incubation, um, research okay. and all of that. Okay. So by the time I get down to writing, when I buckle down to write, uh, I would have already done the book. The, okay. Yeah, so that's okay. So what, what yeah. different things do you write on? What, what specific? Um, so, so far I've written across subjects like relationships, okay. um, um, purpose, of course, mm -hmm. which is my mandate, um, eternity matters, okay. um, dreams, um, potentials, visions, I also have written books that have had to do with education, you okay. know, yeah, to encourage people along the lines of academia and all of that. So I generally would say that I write on almost everything. Almost everything. Because I have a book coming up. The title is um, Dear Stress, Let's Break Up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is inspired by... Yeah, so it's inspired. some of the books were inspired by my own experiences. Okay. Yeah, so... For instance, Happy Health Heaven was birthed out of my own experience two years ago when I was broken down by stress. Okay. okay so I realized how much uh, great impact stress is having on a lot of us, especially those in ministry. Yeah. So in the book, I tackle all the various areas of stress, emotional, uh, there is even volitional stress. Emotional, volitional, hmm. intellectual, spiritual, okay. financial, uh, physical, and, and, and across board, yeah. But generally, what inspires you to write? Um, I won't be able to pinpoint one thing. Okay. I would say that I'm a very uh, deep thinker. Okay. I do a lot of thinking. Okay. And um, I also observe a lot. So don't be surprised from here. <laughs> I'll be doing a book <laughs> from my experience. You know, I do a lot of observation. <laughs> okay. And um, so I'll say from my experiences, from my observations, uh, most of my books have also come out of prayer. Sometimes in the midst of prayer, I have that inspiration to do right. a book. Wow. In my meditations. So it cuts across. Yeah. And we are privileged to have author Raph um, pioneering our ever, first ever a writer's workshop happening on the 1st of July and so if you really want to learn how to you know write and publish a book you have to be there 1st of July number on your screen now 055 call and register and come let's learn from the pro I am blessed to be here with him so we are discussing today from this all-important book birthing prophetic promises is about 164 pages and the cover very intriguing. Are those eggs? Sure. And then there's a golden one out there hatched, sort of. So Can that's you? With Beth. I normally like to make use of the abstract in my designs. Mm. Um, I don't like to do more of the pictorial. So, okay. And I like to do cover designs that will get the the audience thinking. Thinking. Yeah. You know. So uh, obviously, you know that the egg incubates. Mm. The, the chicken. The chicken, yeah. Exactly. So you see that there are four eggs mm -hmm. in the cover and then there's one that has the gold. Yeah. So that has to do with birthing. Okay. And gold is a color that um, connotes divinity. Okay. So in the birthing process, there's also the divine Aspect. process involved, yeah. Wonderful. So I've, I've already asked you about inspirations behind some of and your you books, see that but the, this one. The, 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 the birthing is written in red. Mm -hmm. Red has to do with blood. There's always blood wherever okay. there there's a the bed of something. Yeah. And then, wonderful indeed. So, I just want to find out why you decided to write on this subject. Um, point of correction, I didn't decide to write. <laughs> I was assigned, assigned. to write. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. So, apart from writing, I have been the leader of 
a parachurch organization for 25 years now. Okay. Um, I would say that one of the organizations that has hosted most of the, if you like, conferences in this country would be our organization. We've done a lot of conferences. Wow. Yeah. Prophetic conferences, prayer, um, financial seminars, and all of that. Okay. Now, notice that there was a time that when you invited people to an event, they want to be sure it is not a prophetic meeting. Hmm. Because if it's a prophetic meeting, they don't want to have anything it's to do with it. Mm. So I, I, I got to, you know, I became Curious. intrigued. Mm. I wanted to know what would inform the drawback okay. from prophetic meetings. And um, I realized that there actually is a lot of despondency at the moment. And that is coming from the fact that a lot of people out there have had prophecies, they haven't seen manifestations. Mm. So there's that tendency to give up, give up on prophecies. And so I had the opportunity to buy into the heartbeat of God concerning this matter. And I would say emphatically that, uh, you know, God is not happy that people will get to that point of becoming despondent when it comes to the veracity, mm. the manifestation of his word. Mm. When you read Psalm 12, it says that the words of the Lord are as pure as silver, tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Mm. Uh, God does not lie and everything he says has to come to pass. The word of God is so um, critically important to him that he has even exalted it above his name. You know, so anything that attacks the integrity of his word, you know, um, sort of does not produce his pleasure. Mm. You know, so I was particularly assigned to do this material. And we did not just do a book. When I say we, I'm saying myself. And of course, the Holy Spirit. Okay. We not just do a book. So we actually have established an annual birthing prophetic promises, uh, 60 days of prayer. So you oh. see that at the end of the book, yes. there's a prayer. Yes, yeah. 100 yeah. days it is. I'm sorry, it's 100 <coughs> days of prayer mm -hmm. for birthing prophetic promises. Um, so you see in the book, I also share certain um, testimonies, experiences yeah. Yeah. that I've had with people yeah. who had from the Lord through um, vessels like men of God and all mm, of that mm. and how it came to pass you know because there are prophecies that come that do not necessarily need uh, cooperation you don't need to do anything it will okay. come to pass it will just come the to prophecy pass. of Jesus coming to die for us <laughs> didn't need anybody's you mm. know, uh, there was no way we could stop it mm. but there are prophecies that you need to meet God halfway there are do's and don'ts no, the, the revelation of, or the release of a prophecy is like the release of a seed into your spiritual womb. Mm. When a woman takes seed, after discovering that you have taken seed, there are do's and don'ts. Yes, right. They go for antenatal and, and all of mm. that. Mm. Uh, so it, it's just like that. When you receive a prophetic word, there's what to do and there's what not to do. Just as we also have women who take seed and lose it. Some women are in situations where the womb is not able to contain or carry a pregnancy for long. Yes, right. We have people like that mm. who are not able to carry a prophetic word for mm. long. They miscarry mm. it. So mm. there's, there's a whole lot. And so when we are really back from this break, we'll find out into detail what a prophetic promise is. Then like he's saying, are there some things we ought to do and know in order to position ourselves rightly to ensure that this prophetic promise or word given us comes to pass. We are here with author Ralph. We'll be back after this one. Good news for would-be struggling and amateur writers. Coming up Saturday, 2nd July 2022. Reveal Multimedia Limited and the Writer's Blog presents Writer's Workshop 2022. Discover how to write and publish a book with author Ralph author of 59 books, as well as other extraordinary children writers, editors, publishing experts, etc. Register now. 
many who have gone to their graves with untold stories. Stories meant to change and transform lives. Don't let that happen to you. If a story isn't you, it has to come out. It must be told. Do you have an idea or a life-transforming story to share? Do you want to write a book but don't know how? Let the expert writers at Reveal Multimedia help you out. Are you a preacher with a desire to convert your sermons into books and other readable materials? Reveal Multimedia offers efficient and on-time audio to text transcription services at a very affordable price. We also transcribe interviews, documentaries, etc. We offer other editorial services such as editing and proofreading. That's not all. At Review, the author and his or her book are our priority. We are the brain behind the writer's blog, a book review program which airs on Sunny FM and Sunny TV, meant to celebrate authors and their works, as well as promote other stakeholders in the publishing industry. We offer PR services for authors with top-notch publicists who create thrilling stories, book reviews and commentaries, organize book launches and related events to provide mileage on all meaningful media platforms for the author and their works. Call on us today to help bring every creative idea to life. For more information, call, text or send a WhatsApp message to 0552 535 036 or 0208 428 322. Send us an email, Reveal Multimedia GH at gmail.com. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Reveal Multimedia GH. Our website is www.revealmultimediagh.com. Reveal Multimedia. Dreams come alive. Welcome back. This is the Writer's Blog Talk Show. We're coming to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Remember, it's a season of fathers. And we're celebrating great and mighty men who are impacting the world. And even their small space, wherever they find themselves. If you have a, a father figure in your life, a father-in-law, your biological father, your spiritual father, you're looking for that special place and moment to spend time with them, make sure you're coming here to La Palm. Good music, good food, serene environment, you'd love it. Number on your screen, call and make reservations. We are here with author Raf, and we're discussing from this all-important book and subject, Bething prophetic promises so author Ralph, what is a prophetic promise in the first place i think we'll first look at the word prophecy okay so the prophetic actually is coming from the word prophecy, prophecy so okay a prophecy is what is forth told or foretold so mm -hmm. to prophesy is to foretell or okay. to foretell okay okay so i break it down to foretell is to what others would like to use to predict okay and usually it is a product of divine imagination so god inspires a prophecy mm. and sometimes we also by virtue of standing on the word and by faith we also speak forth the word and that is also a prophecy okay so if you look at the story concerning elijah who said who shut the heavens and said they shall not be mm. green mm. that was a fourth telling prophecy okay so he wasn't he wasn't necessarily saying what god had told him to say he was standing on god's word to enforce wow. a, a scripture okay you know so a prophetic promise uh, so it has to do with one a rima that is a, a now spoken word from the lord okay. concerning the future okay or what is traceable in the graphic that is the scriptures so um when the Bible says, honor your father and mother, it will be well with you, you will live long. Mm. It's a prophetic promise. Okay. So when I honor my parents, I expect that that prophetic promise must come to pass. And how does it come? Right. So um, let's take honor your father and mother mm -hmm. so that it may be well with you, so that you live long. Mm. As I abide by the word, as long as I apply the injunction, the instruction to okay. honor my parents. Okay. The onus is now on me to expect the manifestation of the promise of the that promise. came with the mm. instruction. Okay. Uh, sometimes ignorance of the repercussions or consequence, normally when we say consequence, we only look at the negative, mm -hmm. but the knowledge of the product of your obedience is as critically important as its manifestation mm. so you need to know that i i deserve this thing because i have fulfilled this one 
Wonderful. The Bible says, if, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall, shall eat, eat the good of the mm. land. So that is a prophetic promise. So a prophetic promise can come in several ways. Exactly. Um, can you show me how? In examples? Um, so examples. Um, so the Bible says, um, when Rebecca had the twins in her womb, that's the mother of Jacob Esau, and Esau and Jacob, and Jacob mm -hmm. uh, the Lord revealed to her that there were two nations in her womb and the younger was going to be greater than that was a prophetic promise and i believe as science um, has purported that even in the womb the baby is more often than not privy to what happens in its external environment mm. so for instance uh, uh, a baby whose mother was abused by the her partner. father okay. at the time of pregnancy is likely to grow up and have a, a sense of animosity towards the father. Wow. And yes, it happens. You know, so I have the strong belief that Jacob might have heard a prophecy when the Lord was speaking <laughs> to him. So okay. at the time of birth, he tried to, to hold. take hold of mm. the brother's heel. That is very common. Of What Jacob did uh, was, was not anything um, uncommon. Because usually after a prophetic word, we want to help God bring it to pass. Sometimes we should also understand that every prophetic word, every prophetic promise has its time of manifestation. Mm. So, and the mistake the parents of um, Jacob and Esau made was th they named them not according to divine inspiration. So Jacob was named as a result of his attitude. Yeah. So he was named Jacob because of what he did. Mm. And Esau was named according to his appearance. So while the younger one's attitude influences his name, the older one's appearance yes, influences, influences name. And names do have impact on our lives. So you realize that Jacob actually grew up in the direction of the name that was slapped mm, on him. Mm. And no wonder at the time of that divine exchange, the angel asked him, what is your name? So say I receive a prophetic word mm. or I have a, um, a certain prophetic promise given me or that I have encountered it in the word, like you said. What role do I have to play to ensure that that prophetic word comes to pass? And I just want to read um, in this story, I think Lewis, I don't know whether it is Lewis's story. Um, mm. and that will be chapter, okay, let, let's do chapter three. Chapter three. Um, after the doctor's prediction. He says his condition continued to deteriorate day after day. As each day passed, he felt closer to his grave. The cold icy hands of death did not seem far. Lewis was in his late 40s when he was diagnosed with acute cancer of the lungs. He had been addicted to tobacco for many years and the dire impact at this point did not seem reversible. The doctor predicted he would not live beyond that year, 1997. Absolutely sure about his prediction. So after this encounter um, with the doctor, you had an encounter with the Lord. You actually had a dream. And the Lord instructed you to do something. Um, no, what happened was, um, mm -hmm. so I had a dream. Mm -hmm. And in the dream, the wife of the sick man came to you. Came to me with her hair looking unkempt. In fact, she looked really horrible. And she had this knife pointed at me and threatening me that if I watched her husband die, she was going <laughs> to come at me. So I woke up very troubled i was barely a year old in the lord very young in wow. the christian faith okay so i went to see my pastor i narrated the whole dream to him then he said to me probably god wants to use you to pray for the sick man okay so and at that time in my youthful exuberance and all of that so i i invited one of my friends and i spoke to the woman to get me a bottle of oil which she did then we went to there's this place i used to pray a lot when there it was a sunday afternoon after church we prayed then headed to kolebu uh, emergency ward okay in fact when i saw the man i nearly lost faith because he had his lungs literally showing wow. and all of that had tubes through his nostrils he had really lost weight and that was literally like a bag of bones you know so but and I had this nurse who was administering some drugs, whatever, for him. Okay. And those, those years, from the beginning of my faith in, in Christ, I would normally 
read the scriptures before praying for the sick. Okay. So when I got to his bedside, I began to read from the Gospels. Then suddenly I found myself telling him, a week by this time, by this time you'll be out of this place. And you can imagine the look the nurse gave me. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. In fact, when we left the ward, and uh, in fact, the man, when I said that, he struggled to say amen to that. When I got home that evening, I was like, wow, what have I done? Mm -hmm. You know, that notice I had. So what's going to happen if a week by this time he's not out? But then that perfectionist me could not come to terms mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. So I declared a fast for myself for Monday. And I was praying literally five hours every day for the man. Five hours? Oh, yes. And um, so Wednesday afternoon, I got news that the man had been rushed to the theater. Okay. Then my heart began to beat faster. Is he going to come back? Is, is he going to mm, be, you know? Mm. Long and short is the man was discharged on Saturday. And there's this portion um, on page 27. You said, I have realized from many years of prophetic experience mm. that more often than not, the vessel God uses mm. to administer a prophetic promise mm. has a role to play in its manifestation. Exactly. I didn't know that. More often than not. Of course, not all the time. Okay. But more often than not. And you see, I have copious examples. I'll just give you one, okay. very recent one. Okay. The same book. Mm -hmm. When I released the book, I did two launches. I did a private launch and the, and the main launch. Okay. The private launch was one on one. Okay. So there was this lady who, she was actually a roommate to my former girlfriend in the university. <laughs> so she attended a private launch. Okay. And um, I remember she was asking me if I, if I could remember her. And I said, I know you very well, you know. Now, she told me that um, she had been married and for about four years, there was no child. Okay. And that she wanted a child. So while she was talking, and the Lord said, tell her that she needs to do what she has never done in terms of giving to get what she has never gotten in terms of receiving. So I repeated those same words verbatim to her. Okay. She slouched in my couch mm. quietly for a while. And then she said that, you know... I sense within me that I should empty my account and get a copy of this book. And I asked him, I asked him, are you sure? She said, yes. I said, go ahead. So about four or five days later, she comes to my office with a fat envelope, USD. She actually emptied a dollar account. Wow. And she gave the envelope to me. Then I said to her, this was in December last year. Okay. I said to her, 2022, you have a child. I could not open, usually I would have given the envelope to my driver, go and deposit in my account and all. I couldn't open the envelope. It was in my bag for weeks. Then a friend of mine, a ministry friend of mine who had been married for 10 years without a child, suddenly was blessed with the fruit of the womb. Okay. It was his wife, so they had a, a daughter and I was invited to the naming ceremony. That morning, I signed a check for the baby, you know, as I usually would do. Before leaving, the Lord said, pick that envelope with the dollars in it. When you go, drop it on the altar. I was almost <laughs> going to disagree. Yeah. Because I wrote the book. It's my money, you know. <laughs> but um, I acquiesced the instruction, mm. went for the naming. This and my friend is not even aware of what I'm telling you. Wow. So I dropped it at the altar that morning and to the glory of God in less than two months I was at home one afternoon and then I got a WhatsApp message from the lady and then she said is there a good time to call? I said yes. She calls and she's like I'm in the hospital and I'm pregnant. Wow. Yes. So that taught me a lesson that even in terms of receiving offerings, seeds, mm. sacrifices, mm. It's not about putting those offerings to good use, but to the right use. Good is not necessarily right. Mm. Okay, so when we are able to work closely with the Lord to always buy into his mind, a lot of these disappointments and despondencies and all of well, that will be minimized, mm. if not mm. eliminated. Well, uh, we are here with author Ralph. We're discussing from his book, Birthing Prophetic Promises. 
and um, we've gone you know quite extensively on what it takes for us to really position ourselves to receive it there are a few um pointers you gave bitterness mm. pain and forgiveness yeah. all of that hindering the promise from coming to pass when we are back from this break we'll get talking more with author ralph and discover more we're going for twb nuggets with baba Okra. this is twb nuggets hello and welcome to twb nuggets we started a new series last week on ways to improve your writing skills we established that because practice makes perfect, it is important to set daily writing exercise to ensure you write every single day. Our tip for today is read, read, and read some more. You learn best by example, and gaining writing skill is no exception to this rule. When we read, we learn how other people write to convey their messages in the best way possible. We start to adapt our writing styles with those that we resonate most with. Incorporate daily reading into your writing exercise. You can make your practice paragraph a review summary of what you read that day. Taking different elements of the author's writing style to develop your own voice. And that is our tip for today. Join us next week for another key tip on how to improve your writing skills. My name is Bob Okran. And, as I always say, bye for now. Congratulations to Vicky. She's been so amazing. She's been able to find a niche for us Christian parents who are just looking for ways to empower and encourage our children. Seeing kids, parents, teachers coming together to talk about books, to talk about reading. I believe that the little ones who came around today have um, learnt a lot. It was amazing and I loved the part of the kids where you could colour, you could build houses out of blocks, make whatever you want. It's a kind of a marketplace where we brought together both writers to think through and relate to the value of reading. Today has been awesome. We've been able to introduce more people to the awesome work that Janelle has done. The two books were nicely patronized and we thank you. Coming face to face and joining many authors who have written amazing inspirational books was an exciting one for me. Also, the active involvement of children, especially at a young age, is a good turning point, especially for this particular program. With God's help, it's going to get better and bigger. Great job, Bryce's blog, and we wish you all the best. Hi, I am Arthur Ralph, the writer and publisher of 59 Books. I invite you to the Writer's Workshop on 2nd July 2022. Come learn how to write and publish your own books. Call to register now, 0552-535-036. See you there. Welcome back. It's still the Writer's Blog Talk Show right here on this channel. Remember, we are proudly powered by Reveal Multimedia. Now, Reveal Multimedia is um, an outfit that is out there to help you bring out your book. Audio to text transcription services. You're a preacher. You've preached a number of series in terms of sermons, and you want to translate them into books. Get in touch with Reveal Multimedia. They're also into editorial services, editing, proofreading, all of that. Also, PR for authors. You've written a book. You want to launch it. Give them a call today. They will be able to help you out, as well as, you know, online marketing, um, radio TV promotions, they have got you covered. 0552535036 is the number on your screen. Give them a call today. We are here with the author Raf, and we're discussing from his book, Beth in Prophetic Promises. We've discussed what prophecy is, what the prophetic promise is. And today and right now, we just want to talk about how I can position myself, author Raf, to be able to receive 
that prophetic gift. You, you, you used Abraham's story to draw out a lot of lessons. Um, first, you talked about um, the three prophetic exits. Yeah. Um, exits um, in terms of leaving your kindred, your family, and your then house. your father's house. Yes, yeah, so even before that, it's important to uh, mention the, uh, the issue of bitterness. Because mm -hmm. bitterness is a major robber of mm. fruitfulness. Okay. Bitterness, fruitfulness, they don't, they don't uh, go Stay together. together. Okay. You know, they can never be bad fellows. Mm. And you find that in the story of Hannah, when Hannah prayed that prayer, that, um, that what do you call it, um, famous prayer, <laughs> a prayer without words being Wait, uttered yeah. and all of that, mm. which gave her the... The, the blessing of the womb. The womb. Mm -hmm. You notice that she said she had poured out her bitterness before God. Mm. You know, and so um, it is important that our audience pay attention to dealing with bitterness mm. when it comes to fruitfulness, not only in terms of physical fruitfulness, but fruitfulness in terms of the manifestations of prophetic promises as okay. well. Now, with the three prophetic exits, mm -hmm. we find that in Genesis 12.1, which reads, and if I can read from yes, the book. You can. Yes, please. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country mm -hmm. and from thy kindred and from thy father's house mm. unto a land that I will show thee. Mm. Now I said that Abraham was in Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. believed to be the region where modern day Iraq is situated. Mm. The word derives from the ancient words meso, meaning in the middle of, mm. and potamos, meaning river. Now, the first prophetic exit God asked Abraham to make was a geographical one. So you will notice that, and I say that we are all caught up in various confines. I call them the deadly confines. Okay. So spiritually, you would see that many people are bound by many circles. Mm. So for instance, you are in Ghana. There's a geographical confinement what you would call bondage, you need to break out of. Mm. What are some of them? We make mention of stuff like Ghana time, Ghanaian time. So is it American time or is it Ghanaian time? So you, we have come to accept that it is typical of Ghanaians to be late. To be late. Yeah, you, you get it. Mm. So there are various strongholds that are identifiable in every geographical location. Okay. The responsibility is yours to discover them mm. and break out of them. Mm. Because some of these confinements, some of these um, patterns, if you like, become inhibitions to the fulfillment of prophetic promises. Okay. Because every prophetic promise also requires certain attitudes. Okay. Do's and don'ts, like we said, okay. to bring them to pass. To bring them to pass. So, if you are in a geographical location where indolence is the order of the day, the people that are lazy mm. and stuff like that, you have to break out of it. Okay. You always have to dare to do the difference in order to, you know, meet up with that prophetic with word prophet. of the Lord. Okay. And then the next one, um, apart from the geographical one, is what... Um, the family. The family, mm. you know, so... You shared a story in the book where you, you met someone who said... Oh, yes. The Lord wanted him to... Yes, to break away from his family. So he called the family and then told them, he was done with them. Literally. Literally. He even changed his name. Wow. And I realized we have a lot of issues to deal with. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, so um, there, are fam there are patterns of our bloodlines mm. which we have to also look out for. Of course, we may not be able to break out of all. Mm. And that is a fact. You know, but you should be seen to be making the effort to change the disentangle school, yourself yeah. Yeah. or have yourself mm. disentangled. Mm from the patterns of your bloodlines. And then the... The kindred. The kindred. Yes. No, I think your father's house. The father's house, mm -hmm. yes. And even your father's house, it, it, it doesn't just have to do with your biological parentage. Okay. It goes even to your, your spiritual father. Mm. And a lot of people may just realize that you, by reason of association, get to flow under the influence of a certain pattern from the one you look up to. Okay. You know, when the Bible says the glory of the latter house shall be greater than mm -hmm. the former, mm -hmm. 
it also requires that the products of the latter house will not repeat some of the mistakes mm. of the products of the former house. Mm. You know, and that is the more reason when you read the Bible carefully, there was always that divine instruction for leadership and followership to have a certain gap. Even in the Exodus to the Promised Land at the Jordan, God gave an instruction. Mm. The elders, the followers yes. had to be apart. Uh -huh. right. So the advantage is that when there's a safe distance, you are able to see. Now, if I'm following you closely and you step into a ditch, chances that I also step, step into it is high. So occasionally you would have to give some space to be able to gain proper perspective. It is not surprising that prophets hardly see a lot about those closest to them. If you were to send, if you were to take this hand and take it so close, your ability uh, to see mm. would not be, your vision would not be as clear as if you did this. Far away. So proximity blinds. Proximity. Mm. So there's a tendency for us to repeat the patterns mm. of our fathers mm. when we don't try to merge or, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, add the closeness we are mm. to the fathers mm. with intermittent, you know, stepping aside and stuff like that. You know, so the father's house has to do with both biological and spiritual. You need to do uh, what um, um, some of our fathers will call spiritual mapping. What's See, that? Spiritual mapping is employing the revelatory and informational efforts to discover strongholds and okay. then the strong men that rule in those strongholds because in every location even jesus said you cannot enter a strong man's house mm -hmm. and plunder his goods unless you first mm -hmm. for bind mm -hmm. the strong man. strong man now how can you even bind a strong man you don't know mm. uh, so you can have the strong man unveiled when you discover the strongholds in that space so speaking of the fathers and the covering i mean as we are talking mm. about it there was a section in the book right. you talked about the importance of your covering i mean um in terms of you being able to fully receive the prophetic promise how important is that i would say that um headlessness is a terrible place to be um, it's a dangerous place to be when mm. we talk of fatherhood when we talk of spiritual covering we're only talking about having someone to look up to when you read Isaiah chapter 2 Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1 mm. Isaiah chapter 1 you read it down it says hear O heavens listen O earth for the Lord has spoken okay so when I look at that scripture through the eyeglasses of authority or delegated authority okay. and then subordinates I'm looking at the heavens as the father figure the earth as the subordinates okay. or the sons. Mm. Now, the heavens must hear for the earth to listen. To listen, to listen means to heed. Mm. To listen means to comply. To, obey. to listen means to manifest. Okay. So there has to be a connection okay. between the earth and the heavens okay. for the hearing of the heavens to be listened to, be listened. to by the earth. If you get what I mean. Mm, I do. Yeah. So it's I, a mystery. I, I, it's a mystery. I see a lot of people. <laughs> Um, by virtue of various um, premises rubbishing the idea of fatherhood and you don't need a father you don't need a covering mm. and all of that mm. and they try to give very very logical reasons some have been abused and all of that but when you read the bible closely you find that yes god is our heavenly father but he has delegated authorities here on earth right. for us to submit to mm. and they play a critical role in helping God's words concerning us to come to pass. Wonderful. We are here with Dr. Ralph. We're just about rounding up for today, birthing prophetic promises. Let me just run by you a few of the chapters as we conclude. Um, when life throws you lemons, write it down. And that part, I'm surprised we didn't talk about that. The vision, the prophetic word, it's so important that you write it down. And, and I'll, let, I'll give him the last words for those ones. Chapter 3 says, After the doctor's prediction, help, I need a child. The Lord had said it, get thee out, choose your battles. Um, separate thyself, I pray thee, after that lot was separated. All the way till chapter 20 where 
um, he gives a practical prayer points for 100 days birthing prophetic promises. Author Rav, before we round up, um, somebody will say we've talked a lot, mm. but to the lay person watching us, and in fact, me myself, um, what can I do practically to ensure that the prophetic word I have received or the, the, the prophetic promise I have encountered will come to pass? I'll say three things. Okay. Pay attention to your association. Okay. Because your association can help protect that prophetic word or abort it. Hmm. Company determines accomplishment. Okay. So um, my, my father in the Lord said something at Pastor Eastwood. Okay. He said that um, I don't need a prophet to tell me your future. I need to see your friends and the books you read. So your friends and your books are like a vehicle to the future. Okay. So watch your association. Mm. The next is your location. And I would say that spend a lot of time in the presence of God. Okay. Because that is where the word is safe. You see, mm. when you take a pregnancy to a place that is not safe, you, you lose it. So stay in his presence. Stay with those in his presence. Fellowship mm. with those in his presence. Mm. And the last thing is your occupation. Okay. I define occupation not by what many people define it okay. to be. I'd say that when, for me, your occupation is what you do in most of your 24 hours a day. So if you WhatsApp eight <laughs> hours a day and you learn two hours a day, you are not a student by occupation. You are a WhatsApper. <laughs> by occupation. Right. So <laughs> if you sleep more than whatever you do, whatever occupies your time more the most. is your occupation. Mm, okay. Yeah, so watch that and invest a lot of, if you like, auspicious things into your time. Time is a blank check. Mm, mm. Whatever you fill it in, you'll cash it in the future. That's right. So fill the right things in your time. Wonderful indeed. I love, there's a particular chapter I love which is write it down and you advise us to always write down the visions, the dreams, the prophetic words or the, the prophetic promises in God's word that, you know, you catch. It's not every time that we are able to grab hold of that word, but most of the time it jumps at you. And according to author Ralph, you must write it down. I do say, and then you can always refer mm. and tell God that this is what you said. I'm talking to you about it. Make sure it comes to pass. There are so many things I've heard. Lord, I'm waiting for it to come to pass. But we're running up with this very last chapter, which is chapter 20. What inspired you to put together 100 days uh, of prayer points for birthing your prophetic um, Yeah, because, um, um, you know, so after the, on the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached that powerful sermon, the people ended up asking, so what should we do? I believe that we must marry the theoretical with the practical. Okay. So, apart from the fact that I have shared a lot of mm -hmm. what Nuggets I believe here. to be divine um, lessons and truths um, for helping to birth prophetic promises, I also, like I said in the beginning, lead a 100-day prayer every year. And it starts in November. Okay. So every year we have 100 days of prayer to wow. pray into the prophetic promises concerned in our lives. And, uh, the, the one says, Eternal Father, I thank you for my life, for your prophetic promises concerning me and my future. Eyes have not seen, hallelujah, ears have not heard, and hearts have not perceived all that you are preparing for me. You are going to do so much in me, through me, and for me, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Day two says, Pray that every expectation against you will bow to your prophetic destiny, just as the sheaves of Joseph's brothers bowed to his chief so many of them mm. in there and once you're getting a copy of this book you're sure to um you know encounter the birthing of your prophetic promise how much is this book going for where can we get copies um, so in ghana is for 40 only 40 ghana cities okay only 40 that, that's ghana cheap cities. yeah for all that is in here <laughs> yeah for all that is in there it's someone said no book is expensive it depends mm. on who is buying because hmm. I've, I've got books that have been bought for 
Very interesting practice. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting. And once it is God breathed, of course, yeah. um, 40 Ghana cities is cool enough. I don't know how much pizza costs or how much your wig costs, but you must be able to invest 40 Ghana cities for this number on your screen. Um, social media handles of author Raf also there. His website is there. Get in touch um, with him and get as many copies of his books as you can. We have here the 12 senses every woman must know. This one, I wish I could lead a campaign on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have increase, breaking forth into abundance. Y your themes are so divine. Um, Holy Spirit inspired. This one is prophetic positioning. And there's so many others, 59 of them, actually. And I just heard from his PA that he's writing two books already. So that's getting to about 60 something now. We thank God for your life, author of your very Amen. final words um, pertaining to either writing or pertaining to particularly our discussion for today. Yes, so my final words would be to encourage the audience hmm. to believe in the fact that whatever God has spoken concerning them, it will come to pass. Hmm. The belief is very important. I'll just chip in that we are celebrating our silver anniversary. Okay. And as part of that, I am training and getting published 25 writers. We already have five published wow. and there are 20 more to go. So if you're listening or watching and um, you're interested, you can just send me a message um, on any of my um, social, social media, media platforms. Handles. Yeah. And we're also blessed to have him um, speaking at our first ever writer's workshop on the 1st of July. Please register. We say that we have our own right here in Ghana who are doing amazing. And I'm saying that God is by us because he's put all these graces in one vessel. <laughs> so come and tap uh, on the 1st of July. So if you're an amateur writer, maybe you have an idea to write, you don't know how to go about it, just register. Number on your screen now, 055 3-6. Author Ralph, this is amazing. Thank you so much for making time. We know you're very hot thank and you. very thank busy. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you so much. I have learned so much from this one. I hope you have as well. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, we came to you live from La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, uniquely golden, traditionally Ghanaian. We are back next week, God willing, with another exciting edition. I'm Vicky Amwa. Thank you, DJ Uche, and of course, Gabby for always holding us down. The writer's blog, we say, read, write, indulge your mind. Hi, I'm Vicky. I love books and enjoy reading. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to read. If I go for a run, I listen to an audiobook. In my leisure moments, I read whilst enjoying some good music. Are you an avid reader or you're not learning how to read? Maybe you used to enjoy reading, but somehow it has become a thing of the past. Come on this journey with my guests and I as we dive into various books and themes these books talk about. Every week I speak to various authors who are behind life-transforming books, as well as promote various stakeholders within the publishing industry. The Kitty Zone segment on the show is meant specifically to ignite reading interest in your child. Watch the writer's blog. On this station, this and every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. and on sunny 88.7 FM every Saturday at 1 p.m. This program is powered by Reveal Multimedia and supported by The Writer's Blog. Read, write, indulge your mind. Thank you for watching The Writer's Blog on this channel. If you want to sponsor, partner, advertise or have your book reviewed on the show, call or send a text or whatsapp message to or send an email to follow us on social media this program is powered by reveal multimedia join us next week for another exciting edition the writer's blog read write indulge your mind